Now, Congressman Brown, are we sneaking into socialism? Well, Mr. Granick, uh, I have to answer that question by saying no, perhaps to the astonishment of Mr. Thomas. We're not sneaking in. We're going in at a dead gallop. You I'm call this socialism or what you call it. I don't know what you may call it. Uh, you could call it any one of a dozen things. It all comes out of the same bottle, whether it's socialism, communism, fascism, Nazism, or whatever it may be. It's where the state becomes all-powerful and the individual no longer counts. So I think uh, I think Hitler called it state socialism, the near national socialism. Uh, he, socialism. he called it national socialism. Whether you call it whether you call it socialism or what what have you, and I'm not so sure that you actually believe in what many of us feel is socialism. Uh, as I've listened to some of your discussions on radio and uh, on the public forum, uh, I'm inclined to think that perhaps you're just about two thirds a Republican yourself, Mister <laughs> Thomas. You hate to admit it, but you come from out in Ohio, from pretty sound country out there, and as I, as I hear you espouse your beliefs, you're, uh, you're certainly not a socialist or uh, somebody else isn't a socialist. Gentlemen, last week, uh, James F. Burns, our former Secretary of State, said, he warned us, uh, he, he said we are threatened with the imposition of creeping but ever-advancing socialistic programs. Would you like to comment on that, Congressman? Well, well, I'm not a member of your party, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that Jimmy Burns said that. I heard him make his first uh, speech in which he broke with the uh, national administration uh, down at Washington Lee last June when he said that we would soon become, if we continued to follow the present trend and accepted many of the different programs that have been put forward by the Democratic administration, that we'd all soon become slaves in the galley of the state. And I think that uh, Mr. Burns' idea of what socialism is and Mine seemingly agree, so it isn't just all Republicans that feel that way. Uh, the fact of the matter is, all this planning you're talking about is is centered on one idea and one thought, and it's been reaching one goal only, and that's to take away from the people more and more and more of their individual rights and to make the government itself all-powerful and to let a few people who are fuzzy-minded, who are unable to think clearly or straightly, decide what every individual should do in every section of the country or the land, uh, regardless of whether it's right or wrong. Now, that's, that's what's wrong with this whole program, and you know it as well as I do. And you know that that's the reason why the people of New Zealand rejected the program that you're talking about. Now, the program in New Zealand was not uh, well thought out. It was not intelligent planning. It was placing a burden of taxation upon the people so heavy that they could not furnish uh, their own needs and still support their government, and they turned it down cold in the election. And the conservatives aren't going to change any of their laws. Now let's get on. Well, this uh, may uh, I interrupt there just one yes, moment to say that that's one, of your, that's one of the troubles and one of the difficulties with this march toward socialism, that you adopt and put into effect programs that's practically impossible to stop. You just can't stop a lot of them after you take them. That's what's wrecking. That's what's wrecked Great Britain. Whenever you start down that slippery slide, Mr. Thomas, there's no stopping halfway. You don't jump out of a 25-story building, you know, and stop halfway down. You you finally hit. Uh, now look, I, I ten minutes. Uh, let's let's go on about Great Britain. That's a great that's a great subject to discuss. Of course, you fail to you fail to mention here to this audience and to the viewing and listening audience the fact that in Great Britain the tax burden averages 40% of the people's income. You failed to mention, for instance, that today under this great socialistic government that you have over there, that the people are eating less and, and are uh, engaged in, in uh, uh, more difficult living uh, conditions than they've ever had before in all of their history, that uh, these coal mines are producing less coal than they ever produced before, uh, that, you're, that a lot of the, your industries that you socialized or nationalized over there that were profitable under private enterprise are now running huge deficits. You fail to mention that the British people today are eating a great deal of the food that they get because of the charity of the people of the United States and that we've been supporting the British economy by about a billion and a half dollars a year ever since the war. Let ended. me ask a question there. Wait a minute, Matt. Matt. You want to ask a question? No, 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 no. Let's tell the whole story, Mr. Thomas. Well, of course, the very fact of the matter is that the more government controls, the more the, the productive, uh, productivity of the country 
and the various businesses and industries, the more it controls the individual. And that's the trouble with these so-called liberals. And I contend that I'm a real liberal, more of a liberal than Mr. Thomas. I'm so much of a liberal that I want every individual in America and in the world to enjoy liberty. I don't want some government bureaucrat telling him, or me either, what he has to do, what he has to eat, what he, how, where he has to work, how much his pay shall be, how much he shall contribute to his old age. The government knows better than you do, John. We'll take That's your money. And I don't want to plan all of these other things. I don't want to plan to run plan. And, uh, uh, In other words, what welfare legislation that has been passed would you repeal? And what well, welfare uh, legislation is not socialistic? Well, I remember how they talked about OPA was for the welfare of the people, and I... I was for the repeal of that, and uh, we repealed it, and I saw and, and, in fact, debated with my friend Chester Bowles 30 days after repealed it, and I didn't hardly know the man. He looked so much healthier. He'd been eating meat for 30 days. <laughs> Just wonderful. Now, those are some of the things that I want to take off. I, I want to take a lot of these controls, a lot of these regulations. Right, I, have to say I, I, don't, I don't want to see. I don't want to see the government saying, you have to do this or that. We're going we're gonna to compel you to to pay in your money in the form of taxes, and then we'll spend it for you to educate you. We'll spend it for you. I don't want the federal government to control the schools of this country, for instance, the, the educational system. I don't want them to dictate uh, what uh, uh, a man shall do in the way of running his own business so long as he does not interfere with the rights of others. Congressman Brown, if, as you claim, we are sneaking into socialism, why is it so? Why is it so? Yes. Well, because uh, uh, the president continues to put in this order of regulation under so-called powers, some of which I question, and because the Congress, and there have been a great many Democratic Congresses in recent years, my dear, uh, will vote legislation that uh, gives further authority. For instance, the president's now talking about doing this very same thing, that, uh, or wanting the power to do it, that Mr. Thomas has mentioned, that is to put the government in the industry. Uh, to have the government build all kinds of industrial plants and uh, to run them and to operate them as a, instead of private business. Now, that's, that's the way we're sneaking into socialism. Uh, I'd like to say to the lady that it doesn't make a bit of difference who takes your liberty away from you, whether it's a communist or a socialist. If your liberty and your freedom is taken away from you, you're no longer free. Is giving aid uh, to uh, help an unemployed man to reestablish himself a move towards socialism or better Americanism? No, I don't think that's, uh, that is uh, a move toward uh, socialism in itself. I know many, many industries, including my own little small business out in Ohio, that has helped uh, people get uh, reestablished and employed. Private industry does that. Private individuals do it. But whenever you set up a system where a government said, we'll take the money away from those who are employed and give it to people who don't want to be employed, who don't want to work, who want to load, then that's not fair and that's not right. And that's what we do when we get into this planned economy, which is socialism or some kind of ism. I don't care what you call it. It's just not Americanism. Whenever you get into government-controlled economy, you get government doing what it's doing today, it's taking money away from the employed, taxing the, the production of the worker in this country, and turning around and giving it to people who don't want to work in many, many areas of this nation today. Now, we, let's, let's, let's look at it a minute. We had a depression. We had a depression back here in the 30s, and we were spending out of the federal government at that time a billion. Now, that's back in 34. We spent $735 million. For the, for the unemployed. In 1948, we spent $1,727,000,000 in spite of the fact that we had the greatest employment in the history of our country. We had over 60 million uh, people employed and the greatest prosperity that we ever had. Now, that's exactly what happens when you get state control and when you get some form of socialism, whether it's your form or somebody else. I'm sorry, Congressman Brown. Your summary, Norman Thomas.